Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we are ready for the last match of the day. It is Forsen versus Eloise, the decider match for Group F, and I'm joined by my co-casters and, uh, you know, co-player, uh, Frodan and TJ Asimo Cutie Sanders. Great hosting, man. Thank you. Thank you. They forced us oh, is that where they, the hosting stops? I wanted him to keep going. He's doing so well. Yeah. What, what do you do from here? You I initiate conversations. Start asking us questions. How's your day been? It's been great. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The hardest part about hosting is when they give you one answer, one, <laughs> one word answers. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. That is true. Prod me more. So, uh, you know, how do you feel about this match? Should be good. <laughs> excited. Yeah? How'd you feel about my matches? Eh. <laughs> How'd you feel about Frodan's matches? Mmm. I liked it. Of course you Thanks, liked it. Thanks, guys. Great analysis. Uh, we're getting into game one. And uh, just like the first match between these guys, <laughs> Perfect it is... Perfect transition. It is Zoomir. It's the first time me and TJ casted all weekend. Yeah. Together. It's only been two days. And, and the last you played day, like half the day yesterday. On the last day, we'll be casting together a lot because I'll be eliminated. And we have to kind of get a little no. bit more serious. On the fourth day, cause the fourth day, everyone's already kind of like really drained emotionally and energy-wise. And like some, most people are hungover. So usually the last day, no player wants to cast. Yeah. It's always just on the casters. That's why they bring us. Yeah, pretty much for the last day. Yeah. Until then, we're not really needed. We're just here to add audio. Chucky will be on the couch on, on day four a lot as well. That is true. I he's, suck. He's already been eliminated. Ouch. <laughs> Actually, there's something uh, that I noticed, too, and I, I pointed it out very early in the day, and it's starting to happen even more. You turn off the lights. Oh, thank goodness. I've been sweating all day. I'm getting uh, pretty swampy down south. Um... Is that NA players seem to be struggling this event a lot? Yeah. Uh, only two people have advanced through from NA, is, if I recall correctly. And I don't know if that's just a coincidence or that's actually a trend of perhaps traveling fatigue and other factors coming into it. Or maybe, maybe that settles part of the debate too of NA hey, versus EU. Hey, come to our turf. <laughs> You know. Dreamhack Austin. Dreamhack Austin, baby. Yeah. All-American final. Defend the land, so the homeland soil. That's but right. Thank you, Chucky, for doing the correct thing. Well, it is Zoomir, and I feel like Grainad's analysis in game one kind of nailed it. It was going to be about four turns of, of zooish animals fighting for board, and one player's going to come out ahead. Yeah, sounds about right. It can be still be pretty even um, after all the trades, but... Yeah, one person will usually decisively get ahead, gets like a big minion to stick, whether Dark Shark counts him in, whether sometimes it's just Doom Guard on curve, these, and your opponent uh, to answer it. These juggles are really important, though. Oh, looks like gonna hold back on the ritual. Yeah, unless ritual for one, but yeah. I guess not. It's sort of unlikely that you hit both juggles, I yeah, guess. Yeah, it's, it's one and three that yeah. you would hit both. So if you hit the one and three, your juggler survives and you're way ahead. Yeah, but uh, if not, then you lose Forbidden Ritual, which yeah. is like the best reload tool you have yeah, and in this Gor matchup. With Gormok in hand, I think Eloise just realizes, like, yeah, I want the four one ones next turn, and then I can maybe get a Gormok off. Yep. Which is likely. Yeah. I don't really see how Forsen would go about clearing these, so... Pretty reminiscent of the first time they played. Dark Peddler can pick up Mortal Coil or some really annoying things too. Uh, I mean, how good, can, how reliable is Reliculi Seeker in this matchup? Do you think? Mm. Not at all. Yeah. You keep trading so much, it just feels it, like it never. Yeah. Pops. I mean, also your best tool is Forbidden Ritual, which uses all your mana anyway, so you can't play a bunch of like play Forbidden Ritual and drop Reliculi Seeker on the same turn. Definitely what if feels you have the coin, like? TJ. <laughs> well, you got really close. I was turned the other way. Oh, my God. <laughs> the coin's gone, Jockey. Let it go. I know. I know. I feel like I'm on the outside of a very fresh meme right now. Is very fresh meme? Yeah, I don't know. No, not everything that we no, say there's, is There's meme. no meme about the coin. Oh, okay. You said just let it go. It's like as if it's some long-term grudge he's held. Okay, I, could, I see where you're coming from. So I'm just like, it I'm did, on the outside looking in, meme man. Yeah. I'm having flashbacks to middle school and everything. You weren't in laughing at Frodan for not knowing. <laughs> you weren't in on the middle school memes. I wasn't. What were the middle school memes? Middle school memes were making fun of me. Wow. Poor Frodan. I said, I'll show you. I was a mad scientist. I'll show you all. I'll be a Hearthstone caster. And who's the one truly laughing? Validated Frodan is going to be in the next adventure. 
You'd be so jealous if that was the case. TJ, I would be I jealous. Got, yeah, would you be jealous if I got a Hearthstone card and you didn't? Well, judging by like our career I'm, pass, I'm hella you, jealous of Fire Bat. He got a got a card that will forever live in the Hearthstone. Judging by our career pass, if you got a Hearthstone card, I'd probably get a Hearthstone card about a year later. <laughs> but people will still would not know that it's a Hearthstone <laughs> people card. People would still not know that it was a Hearthstone card. <laughs> Your Hearthstone card would get played, and my Hearthstone card would get disenchanted. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Dude. Know, Mine might be instated in the game, but then <laughs> yeah. it gets removed. <laughs> your your Hearthstone card would flip someone off and then get removed from the game. Another Sander Elemental. Hmm. <laughs> Forty dust. Yeah, my Raven Idol gave me three Sander Elementals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, At least I get Reddit posts. Yeah. At least you get Reddit posts. That Doom Guard off the top, pretty brutal. I like that. Uh, Louis went for full value on the Forbidden Ritual. But uh, that Doom Guard is quite the fearsome opponent. Yeah. Yep. Just the sequencing here, juggler, peddler, so you get to juggle and then the the one mana play. Yeah. Or is it peddler? Seems good or to me. Or not peddler, uh, I meant the M-Gang boss. Well, you can, M-Gang boss you probably want to play like after the Doom Guard, I wow. guess. Why is the dark peddler first though? Maybe if you don't she pick up a good one drop, yeah. 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 I think holding back the juggler. I mean, she's out of forbidden rituals, but the juggler is not really relevant right now. Neither is the M King boss, of course. But the problem yep. with Doom Guard is, even though it's so many stats, it can only attack one thing a turn. So Eloise is just going to keep pushing and staying ahead on board. Yeah, Doom Guard can't clean up everything. It's really annoying. Uh, Force is going to be. Ooh, Ooh, ritual. Is a very good pickup for him. Yeah, uh, fills out the curve, summons a lot of minions, puts out multiple threats out. And mm. also makes Eloise's choice to keep the juggler really good. But do you just play Forbidden Ritual now and just trade into the That's what I would boss? do. Because if you play Darkshire Accountsman, one, you sort of are forced to play. Well, you're not forced to play Forbidden Ritual, I guess, because kind nothing really on the board is going to like trade up to it. I guess you can hope to top deck juggler in the next two draws and then get kind of a juggler ritual off. Yeah. The only thing I don't like here is councilman and ritual for two. I feel like you're kind of two behind then. So just councilman and pass. If he's going to do that, then yeah. Yeah. Definitely have to run over the imp gang boss, regardless of which play you go for. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, I mean, well, he's worse. tempted, man. He's pretty tempted to go for the Forbidden Ritual. Oh. oh. It's such an important card, I feel. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He's probably just, not, like, not feeling like his, his Dark Shark Chemistry will go down very easily with a 2-2 two -two on board. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, those are still two very big threats in Darkshire Councilman and Doom, Doom, and Doom Guard. There is oh, just oh, a chance. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at the cards. There is just a chance Force and can kill Eloise next turn. I mean, he's got sure. eight points of power, most likely, left on the board and picks up second Doom Guard and another buff. That'd be lethal. And Eloise plays Flame Imp. Yeah, the Flame Imp is an awkward draw. I, I would expect her to go with Blood Imp instead, but you never know. 3-2 uh, is better for fighting back on board if you can eliminate all these little small targets. Juggles. Can the Juggles uh, clear the big dudes, too, if it ends up going that way? I don't know. I well, don't she has so. five power right now, and she gets two Juggles, so that's yeah, so seven yeah. maximum, or eight maximum power. Oh, six, right? Yeah, yeah, she has six on Yeah. Um, and there's way too much health. Like, she she can't clear off everything but now she can clear off one of the the high health targets but do you really want to do that i don't know Ooh, uh running out of time yeah looks like maybe a missed attack nope no got them okay. all man that was like one of those things where you're so afraid double doom uh -oh. guard Suddenly. all the way across wow. the board what does it mean and Orson's decision to play the, the ritual definitely worked out yeah. when you're going to draw a second Doom Guard off the top. Yep, and Eloise is sitting, uh, sitting duck here. Yeah. Can't really do much. Out of both Forbidden Rituals That's as well. Not a bad draw. And perhaps maybe wow. another thing to help off. Abusive Sergeant would be good. Oh. Wow. Well, there you go. Now that both Doom Guards are cleared. Yeah.
Huh. And Funny Elo matchup. Eloise runs double Doom Guard as well, right? Uh, I believe so. I saw one Doom Guard. I just, you know. Yeah. Of, you, just, yeah. you just never know for sure. Some and people run these crazy decks, but I imagine double Doom Guards are more. And she hasn't drawn wow. either, so. That was a really oh. bad board, but now look at this. Well, wow. Defender of Argus. That is really good, especially with the value trade. Yeah. He's actually got a lot of, like, cheap drops left in his deck, too. Like, all of his top end's done. And well, Eloise still has, like, double Doom Guard. Well, the, the thing is, Forsen has one Forbidden Ritual left. Eloise has none, which is, like, one of the best ways to get back on board. Yeah. It's one of the best sort of, like, top decks yeah. in the very late yeah. stages of Zoomir's. And Forsen also still has things like Sea Giant, I think, too, available, which is just, like, a huge bomb if he draws it next yeah. turn. You can't answer it. It's almost game-ending. Yeah. And even though the board gets traded off a lot, it's you're still almost always going to play and it, be able to play it. I think this might be the turn where Forsen just starts going face. Uh, I feel like he has the pressure here. He can do, what, seven? seven and, and then her down to three. Limits her taps. It, it, yeah, it means that essentially Elise has to draw exactly a card that clears off a minion or else she loses because um, she can't leave up two minions and live at three. And if she taps, then she has to clear everything because she'd be at one. Uh, so going face here, all face, I think, is just kind of the way to do it. He's thinking. Yeah. Yes, he is thinking, TJ. That's a good sign. That's a, that's a good draw. Guard was basically the one card she needed to draw. Obviously, tapping is kind of suicidal at this point. So you leave up a 1-1. A one -one and right. And you just trade the Doom Guard and you pray. Dog, but yes. do you think that you would lose anyway if you didn't get the extra card from tap? You could, you could tap into Voidwalker potentially. Because that might be you Defender of Argus, perhaps. As well. Well, yeah, you won't be able to tap next play. turn. Oh, right. Play the Defender. Nine, you, so, yeah. Rough. She would have you, to. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you have to dodge uh, an attack buff here. Is that more likely than, than you tapping into Voidwalker is basically the main question. Yeah. No? It, I mean, that is an attack buff, but she not enough. is on the Doom, Doom Guard, Guard draw to win. What? Oh. Or PO. Yeah, uh, and, and for Forsen, it's still best to just go face. Shut off the life tap. That means one draw for two two outs, I think. How many cards are there? There's 12, so one out of 12 for the Doom two, Guard. Two out of 12. She has PO as well. Oh, right, because he goes face. Yeah, he can't clear off the Does she one. Do you have Soul Fire? No. no I, I don't believe it. so. Yeah. And both peddlers were used. Yeah, yep. I mean, it's still a five out of six chance to win the game for Forsen, which is still great odds from this position. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess Argus also is kind of annoying. Argus. What about Voidwalker? But Void she can't tap. Voidwalker so. trade. Oh! oh! There it is. That's our stone. Oh, oh my lucky. goodness. Oh, man. And Louise <laughs> throws her head and shakes. I mean, yeah. you can't really do anything but just, like, acknowledge that that was a really tight, close game. Yeah. Well, I mean, <sighs> two outs there. Forsen, I, I feel like he played that pretty well. Um, but Zoo versus Zoo. Oh, that's that's backbreaking. Once again, Eloise gets the series edge through winning the Zoo mirror. Oh, man. She's been, definitely been getting fortunate when it counts. And, and she's still got that Temple Mage that I feel like is pretty good against Zoo. Never it's got the, the double Arcane Explosion. a team logo icon been more appropriate than now. <laughs> Man, yeah. I would be so salty if I was forced, and I would not blame him. He okay. should be livid. I thought you were saying that Eloise was electrified after that win. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. TJ is really happy with himself after that <laughs> one. He's over here smiling. Oh, man. I wasn't shocked by that. Ah, jeez. Hey. Hey. All right, so let's go into game number two, Shaman versus the Zoo. Uh, early game plays here for the Shaman, but a lot of available options here for the Zoo player, Jackie. What do you think? Uh, I mean, definitely looks like a better Zoo hand than Shaman hand, with the only kind of difference being Lightning Storm is good, but you really need to be in, like, a semi-favorable spot for it to be really good. If it's just bringing you back on the board, the zoo can just get back on board pretty easily. Yeah. And Abusive oh. is the literal best draw in the deck. Yep. Sometimes lucky. Yeah. 
getting back for that Doom Guard last turn. Yeah. Yeah, if he wasn't able to, then uh, the Voidwalker stay alive, get an easy sni snipe. Argent Squire doesn't gets contested pretty easily. And, I mean, you might not even need Lightning Storm if you're in this position. Yeah. You're the one who has the board initiative. Well, it's really great if you get into this spot because essentially, Forsen's eventually going to force out a Forbidden Ritual uh, if Eloise picks it up, and then he can just storm it away and have all the tempo. Yeah, and this is a really awkward turn because Darkshire Councilman can, if there's any damage, pretty much just gets traded into almost for free. Yeah, Flame Tongue or Second Abusive would yeah. really kill it. Yeah. I mean, even just the Feral Spirits here, and you preemptively attack to make the trade. Yeah. Pretty good. And it plays exactly around Sea Giant. <laughs> I'm sure that, yeah, wasn't on his mind. Well, that he could have helped it. Well, like, if it was one turn sooner, maybe you trade in the Squire to play around it. I don't know. OK. Things to think about. Yeah. Well, yeah I definitely think that? it's on the back of his mind, for sure. I mean, I, for, I wouldn't put it past Force to understand that because he plays a lot of Zoo himself. He had this, almost the exact same list card for card as other use. Like, you look at, like, his hand, though, and you think, okay, what's the way he loses? Seems like Sea Giant. Like, he's got, he's got ways to deal with a big board. Uh, he's got ways to kind of just push damage and stay ahead on board. But if a Sea Giant sticks, that's the one card he can't really deal with. Yep, easy trades. And there's that Forbidden Ritual. Yep. This is the exact turn I was kind of talking about where now Forsen gets to spend three mana to remove the entire turn from Eloise. And that's going to put him in a really favorable spot to win. Yeah. All yeah, right, you can still play Doom here the next turn, too. Do you not totem to play around Sea Giant, TJ? Yes. <laughs> yes. I like your, uh, you know, your confidence. I feel like at this point, though, I mean, Sea Giant comes down, you're pushing so much damage that unless it's Argus, you're still really happy. Yeah. Also just reduces the cost of the thing from below. Yep. Okay, Argus Squire and the Sea Giant. But this is like the situation where I know uh, Zoo players just are, they always know if that feeling are too familiar, it's just you're stuck with double power overwhelmings and you don't know if you're going to use them ever. Yeah. How much damage can Force put out? You can put out uh, four plus the five, so that's a nine. Put your opponent down to seven health. And then you have, assuming no taunt, four plus three, the, the lightning bolt the following turn. Yeah. But, yeah, I guess so. I mean, if, if Sea Giant gets taunted, you're, you, know, you might be in some trouble. But then again, not really, because the more face damage you push, the more you limit the life taps. Yeah, and you're at 30. Yeah, so, so eventually I feel like you're going to push him out of the game. If you go face, regardless of if they what they have in their hand, if they have Argus or not, so. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of hedging against the Argus here, getting rid of the Divine Shielded minion that would yep. also be really annoying to get through. So now it basically has to be tap into Argus, and even then, it's not that insane. Yeah. yeah that Taunt Totem actually being really problematic from the previous turns, because it denies the Doom Guard from coming down and shutting off, uh, or killing the... The totem golem, pretty effectively. Yeah. And that's just game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can do your due diligence, play it out, but we yeah. know that that's game very much so. There they go. Two powers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from Eloise's perspective, maybe if there's no damage and Argus off the top is still keep you in it, but... Those power moments were so troll. Coming to the hand early on. Yeah, I mean, that's just another reason why some Beat people, people the choose not to uh, run Power of Women. They run double soul fires. Whether that's right or wrong, who knows? Yeah, yeah I mean, soul fire definitely probably would have found better spots this game because of how things panned out. It tends to be a lot better when you aren't at on board, but not sure if that would have even been enough for her to recover. It was just really, really strong opener from Force and coupled with the Storm in hand. Yeah. So now both players have Zoo gone. So naturally, we move on to Shaman versus Shaman. Yeah, and I think both players are just running aggro Shaman. So this is a big, 
and a 50-50 to decide how the rest of the match goes. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of what you accept going into this tournament if you bring this lineup, that you expect to be playing a lot of these 50-50 matchups. Yeah. And um, that's where Tech, like Lightning Storm, actually does become relevant yeah. uh, if they do need it and they draw it. Yep. Lightning Storm usually only used when you have a strategy of like banning Warrior. I know it's uh, really tempting to have a turn one play, but it's just never really worth keeping the Abusive Sergeant, even if you're going turn one, right? Um, I don't know. I, I really like Abusive Sergeant going turn one because you play down your minion, they play down theirs. Obviously, you have to draw a one drop in addition to it, but yeah. you have three chances. Uh, and then they play their one drop and you abuse of your yours into theirs. Yeah. And if you can pull that off, you are very far ahead. Also, if you draw a second abusive, you can abuse of your abusive and kill off a totem golem. Yeah. Abusive is basically just kind of one of the best cards in the early game here. Now, Flame Tongue sort of does the same job. Um, so, Eloise has access to that as well. Goes with one ones over Shapeshift or Heal. Which is kind of interesting to me. I... I think I would have preferred... I really like heal, honestly. Like, you get into some weird spots where just healing your minions can be really nice. Yeah, uh, or even just making sure you don't die yeah. while you push for, like, your own lethal, yeah. too. Yeah, and then also just even the druid here power representing the one damage wow. kind of helps. Whereas the one ones are kind of like the easiest thing to play around because you don't need to play around it. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, the one ones. I mean, the the thing about the uh, the piece of your powers doesn't do anything on the board though, and board often is the early game decider of who wins the game. Yeah, like Druid Hero Power obviously would have been the best in the situation that ended up happening, but uh, yeah, we'll have to see how much work the Silverhand recruits put in. Yeah. Well, the one one is going to be okay. Uh, the healing totem probably would have been better because it would have just put it out of range of the two minutes on the board, but... Yeah. Well, 7-7 seven, seven comes down. It's going to be the biggest minion by far, and that's kind of the advantage of going first when your opponent's already used the coin. So it begins. This, the arms race of 7-7s. Seven, yep. Yeah. Best answer to a 7-7. Seven, seven. Your own 7-7. Seven, seven. A 7-7. Seven, seven. I was going to well, say I mean, Game Hunter. <laughs> well, it's on Free five nerf. mana. Painter, big game hunter. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> oh, the card's so broken and dodges big game hunter. And now he doesn't really have minions to play. This is where uh, Shattered Sun Cleric would be sick. Shattered Sun Cleric or oh, it didn't even be that old, good. <laughs> old big game hunter while we're on that topic. Yeah. Or, uh, or Hex. <laughs> yeah. Or Bog Creeper. Bob Creeper would be pretty good in this position if you could play <laughs> for three mana. Hey, Farsight plays it for four mana. Some shenanigans. <laughs> oh, man, I'm scared, dude. I don't know. I, it, <laughs> when, when you play, like, when you actually have, like, a really big record, you're kind of scared to tarnish that record, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, want it to be immortalized just as, like, under. You just want to tap out <laughs> now. Drop out now. <laughs> Take like, your top guys, 16 and I, run. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be really late tomorrow, like seven hours late to my match, <laughs> so don't even wait for me. Well, you have an advantage. Nobody even knows I your can, other I can decks. picture it now. It's There's true. an article a few years from now. It's, like, highest win rate decks in competitive history. Number one, Frodan's Bog Creeper Shaman. There's, there's Six and zero. Astro. Hell yeah. Frodan. Did not show up to the tournament for day two. There's going to be a 30. I'll take it. There's going to be a 30 for Barry 30. Barry Bond still has the home run record. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a, like a documentary made. Like how good could Dan's Seat Story Cup run have been? <laughs> sure, pretty sure Crit will just make that video tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> could have been pretty good. <laughs> how good was Frodan's Seat Story Cup this, run? Uh, this play was really greedy from Forrest and I feel like it's going to get punished. Uh, how much damage is this? 8, 13? <laughs> well, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Two it, flame it's tongue. not lethal, but flame, I'll tell you what is really good. Flame Tongue, kill their Flame Tongue, and play a 7-5 taunt next to it, and push phase for 9, and have a bunch of damage in your hand. It's uh, 20 damage this turn? You can, uh, you can do more with Lava Burst, Flame Tongue, 1 Rock Biter. 
Uh, that's nine. That's twelve. That's oh no, it's still twenty. He could just Either put way, him. 20. Yeah, he could put him to two and hold back the lava burst. Yeah. So double flame tongue, double rock biter. Yeah. Uh, but then you're just dead. Or maybe you double flame tongue rock biter and trade into the seven seven. Yeah. I mean, you can't go all face, right? Then yeah. You're just dead. I you, mean, you can rock biter this trade into seven seven rock biter your face trade into the flame tongue totem. Go face for nine. I. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that works really well. It's pretty clean. Really disarm your opponent. That attack, you're right, was pretty greedy, man. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Whoa. The arms race kind of came to a close. Okay. Does uh, does this help stabilize? Uh, spell power totem would be 10 and 12 damage either way. Yeah. So kind of looking at it, is there any way you can score a next turn lethal like you have seven coming from hand next turn if you go like bolt a flame tongue because you kind of have to uh i don't know i mean you can trade one flame tongue and then ding from below yeah you block the attack from the and now you go flame face base. obviously and then you have four plus eight from hand next turn so oh wow that's lethal yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't think there's much four damage stuff, except if you got a charger like yep. the Arjun Horse Rider. All right. Something like Arjun Horse Rider. Yeah. I mean, Wolf Rider would have done it. Wolf Rider would have done it. Yeah. The old Blue Gil Warrior would have done it. Blue Gil Warrior definitely would have done it. So something like is a pretty accurate statement to make. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Shocky. Caster speak. Something like... For those of you who don't understand, there was a time in, in Frodan's casting career. Young Frodan used to keep comparing everything to something like. He needs something like Big Game. He needs something like to Harrison which, Jones. I got a message saying, it's not something like, it is that card. Yeah. <laughs> he needs exactly something like Lava Burst. Something like Deathwing. You know, so <laughs> so last time the players were in this position, uh, Forsen was able to pick up this win and then. Went to the Druid Mirror. Eloise's Tempo Mage. Oh, really yeah, got a right. win. It was the dream. Yeah. Temple. Is it yeah. going to play out exactly the same as it did uh, in well, their first match? The last time Ellie was up 2 0 and then 4 0. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Reverse swept with Druid. Which I've been hearing is happening a lot this tournament. Just a lot of reverse sweeps back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because you would think that wouldn't happen. Right. Because last year's saying is like, I counter with this deck and then you counter with that deck. So it's kind of like a trade yeah. until game five. It's like 3 0 or. It's almost like yeah. 2 0. Yes. Intuitively, like yeah. if you fall down 2 0, you're pretty dead. In yeah. Conquest, that usually actually happens where you're up 2 0 and then like you kind of had this third deck that maybe they were targeting. Yeah. It's like your Reverse sweeps action. are a lot more common in Conquest. Yeah. I would, you know, you'd think, but. Hmm. The hold, by the way, on the uh, the abusive start to turn one anticipation for the living roots. Very good. I honestly didn't really mind uh, flame tongue here, but like you know, you've got the argent horse rider coming down. It's a threat. You push damage. Getting the one one totem is really nice because now she can uh, flame tongue and trade it into a mire keeper that might come out. Yeah. No, it works out pretty well, actually. I think Forsen might be in some trouble. There's been a lot of debate over the course of the uh, two days. The matchup between uh, Token Druid, or the Og Druid, whatever you want to call it, and Agro Shaman. I think, wow. I think Agro Shaman is... Favored. Fav pretty favored. Yeah, I would say so. I don't want to say by a lot. I'm pretty sure those stats also back that up, too. So it's like, if top player sentiment and the data kind of backs it up, then it just feels like it's true. Yeah. But there's uh, a lot of players here that say they like the Druid in that matchup, which I, I just don't know. You don't have taunts until Ancient I, War. I think Flame Tongue is just really powerful against Druid because they don't really have minions to kill it. They have to use Wrath or Swipe on it. I think face damage is really powerful against Druid. Yeah. I mean, they, they do run more taunts now to kind of stabilize, but... It's tough to get there in the first place when the Shaman has an opener like Eloise did this game. Yeah. You sort of have to have like that crazy draw with innervates early. Even if you have just traditional ramp with wild growth, it's still sometimes not enough. Do you like that trade, by the way, on the 2-2? Two -two? 
Does it play around swipe better? Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's basically what she was thinking there. But I never like trading Frodan. Yeah, I mean, even your control decks like to go face. Yeah. Fireball, Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance. Yeah, Chalky the aggro player. Minions. Yeah. I mean, in the end, Chalky just likes killing his opponent very fast. Mm -hmm. just, you can't really blame a guy for doing that. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> As a single tear right. rolled down his face. Uh, so the cleanest way to remove the teacher I see is um, probably the bolt with the 2-1. Yeah. And then and that gives you room. I mean, you might as well play Tunnel Trog right behind that. Yeah. So then that just leaves you with the abusive sergeant to fill it out. Flame Tongue Totem, though. This Flame Tongue is making me cry. It's looking awfully lonely. Yeah. It, it's it's just making me cry that it, it's still in the hand because it's so annoying for Druid to deal with. Yeah, now that Raspin used to. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's the lonely toy right now. But he's so he's good. He's a toy? Is that what totems are to you? Yeah. What's, what was that stupid Best. thing in Toy Story? The Island of Lo No, no, what was that? The Island of the Lost Toys? I don't know. Am I just going crazy right now? There's got to be a thing somewhere. Island of the Lost Toys. I don't know. Oh, you mean like kind of like sending your dog off to the farm or something like that? No. <laughs> something no. like sending something your dog. Something I'm killing my toys? <laughs> TJ pulls out his phone and he is currently Googling this. <laughs> okay, right, TJ. Don't worry. Cover for me, guys. Yeah, we got gotcha. you. Island of the Lost Toys. Eloise has been saving uh, yeah. a lot of her cars. And is it time to finally unleash them? I mean, now it's kind of getting dangerous. Uh, rolling an Ancient of War turn, you got to kind of think about how to play around that the best. But do you really want to ignore a teacher? Nah, you can't ignore the like, teacher. I, I just feel like she's been trading in every spot possible. Yeah. And you got to pick a turn to go face, essentially. Yep. Yeah, it's a thing. And usually the sooner the better. I also agree. It's Island, a thing. Island of the Misfit Toys. It was a movie from uh, that little claymation computer animated movie from like the 70s or something. It was like uh, <laughs> Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the Island of the Misfit Toys. Just because you're right, TJ, doesn't make it cool. The yeah, you, you said Toy Story, and I was like, what? Uh, it, was, it came from my you childhood. You joke about things like toy farms and stuff. No, it was like really creepy. Like all the toys were just like messed up. Yeah, it's like Sid's workshop or something like that where all the yeah. toys like he just messes up with. Yeah. All right, well. It's a this... lot like watching a Ray Nat stream. <laughs> Plays really heavily Except in the toys swipe. toys are decks. But it's not there. <laughs> Ray Nat's deck <laughs> Ray <work>. Nat is <laughs> Sid. <laughs> we're all <a> deck. <laughs> no. Just run the cards. We're just kind of like uh, half the half the Oh, poor, poor Andre. Are you Buzz Lightyear in that story, Dan? The, so the, the Buzz Lightyear comes and saves the decks? Comes and saves no, that's, the like, decks. that's like Colento. Oh, oh geez. Flame Tongue Totem is pretty good. That is pretty insane. So um, do you like the, the horse rider? Because you get to maximize the Flame Tongue potential, or do you like the, the, the totem dude? Totem dude. It's late, Jockey. Totem dude, go! <laughs> Use totem golem attack. <laughs> God. You know, I feel like you start hitting diminishing returns at three flame tongue totems. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Never really considered that, that one. You could also just play late second flame tongue and trade with the other flame tongue. <laughs> horse runner. Honestly, this is kind of weird how you want to sequence this out. Yeah, the positioning of how everything went. Like, this is just a weird turn. You're putting, like, six damage into two health taunts. Crossing your fingers for no swipe. <laughs> All right, so she is going to use... Yeah, I mean, she knows that there's no swipe because it would have been used last turn, but it could always be drawn off the top. That is a lot of trading. I know, right? Dang. Hurts my brain a little bit. Yeah. Well, no taunt totem. No swipe. Well, she he can, uh, or, yeah. or he can uh, start removing now. You can mulch the taunt, maybe kill a flame tongue and leave that lonely one on the far left. It's just the ancient war gets bullied too easily. The ancient war just gets wrecked. Like, you're going to have to use that to stabilize later. You can feral rage for health, maybe look for a yog later on. Yeah. Uh, I 
mean, that looks like the play to me. It's like this is like the positions where Mulch just feels bad because you're killing a low value minion and you might give them something to play because they're running out of cards. Yeah. So it's like right. any bets. What's uh, the how about rate? a high low on like a card? Is it higher than than four mana? Yes. yes. Yeah, I'm going higher. low. I'm going like Murloc Tiny Thin. No, I'm going uh Bog Creeper. I'm going seven plus. Oh. What? Wait. Did you say lower than four? I said higher than four. Oh. So, so. Dan wins. I guess. I actually lose, too. I said it's lower than four. Yeah. So like, I, I think I, four was like the exact number where we, we all lose. Speaking of four. We're all DQ'd <laughs> on a technicality. Four mana, seven, seven. That is quite. I mean, just use mulch. Yeah. I'd say you play the dank steed too. I know Tuscar Totemic is much better, but you t I, I want to be able yeah, to get show the dank my steed down. Yeah, you have Flame Tongue on the board. Oh, okay, never mind. Well, that's much better. Yeah. All right, so it's oh, going to be Yogg no. Orson's so upset. I uh, would be too, if man. If Yogg even matters. Yeah. I mean, he, uh, he doesn't have mana yet. Yeah, I don't think Yogg even matters. Uh, it, but Doom Hammer. It would help. Uh, six, seven. Yeah, he's still going to live. There's not a draw in the deck that's going to make it so. He's well, going to die next turn. Uh, if he plays is there? Ancient of War. Uh, well, it, about... just the Ancient of War makes it awkward. Oh, no, if you trade in the. Yeah, if you use the Flame Tongue efficiently and Top Deck Rock Biter, maybe that's lethal. So you. Horse Rider would be four, Steering Tunnel would be three, then you trade in the Tuscar Totemic. That'd be 10. You have nine. Plus two, 11, plus four. No, so wouldn't be enough. So on board, she's going to have... Oh, okay. So this actually Man saves mode. you more health, I think. And then maybe you can crutch on the, on yeah. the Ancient Orb. I mean, he's I, also probably noticing that Eloise has been trading a ton. Yeah. All right. He's going to need to draw Yogg. Yeah. How about this? Do you... Right, you don't play around Yogg, right? Like put down you, the Dread Steed. Yeah, I put down the Dread Steed <laughs> instead of the 477 because you anticipate that, like, something stupid would happen. <laughs> but you just clear all of your threats. All right. This is sort of like a middle ground, I guess. Yeah, there's no weapon removal yeah. spell yet. Yeah. Actually, there is a Nex Ramus an Wait. adventure. There's like a... This, no, that's not a Nex. Yeah, there's... Sabotage? A, no, there's no, no. a spell that... Oh, Sabotage. Oh, yeah. It's, sabotage. That, yeah, that's... that's uh, but that's a, that's a combo card. It doesn't work off. It doesn't work with the Og. But um, um oh, what what was there, it? There was one that was like you remove your opponent's weapon. It's because like his weapon was like insanely. It's powerful. like Vesuvius or something like that. Oh, you guys are talking about like the PVE thing. Yeah, yeah. you won a PVE. Yeah, I'm a PVE master. You're the PVE Hearthstone master. The race to Black Rock Mountain. Yeah, that was the first tournament Watch you ever who you're won. You're talking to. You're yeah. talking to. The, the Twitch presents the Black Rock Mountain. And thanks for the free money, Frodhan. <laughs> I'm in the interest of helping my friends out. All right, well, back is to back he dead? ancients. No, no ancient back to back ancient of wars is pretty hard to overcome. Yeah, you don't have enough to get past. The mana tide is so annoying though. Yeah, drawing two cards. <laughs> like if if that was a zero two. All right, that's all right, it. game. Yeah, there it is. All right, Forsen's run has come to an end. <laughs> oh, wow. The single emotes. Firebat died yeah. for nothing. Firebat died for this. <laughs> he died. Yeah. First, that forcing can lose to a stream sniper from China. Yeah. Eloise advances to the round of 16, her first time as Heat Story Cup going to the next round. Yeah. She, uh, she Ooh. actually was really sad last time to see where she came and lost. Yeah. So this is a, a moment of redemption for her. Yeah. And, uh, oh, you guys missed the handshake. <laughs> wow, you're emoting him in real life, too? Wow. Make room, Chuck. All right, uh, get the headset on, uh, Eloise, so that we can hear you. And you can hear us. All right, so, Eloise, what's it like beating Forsen? Twice. Twice. Not once, but crushing his soul again in the zoom mirror. Uh, Forsen is a very kind and nice gentleman. Mm, thanks to him. Mm. Oh, for, you're saying he let you win? For letting me, yes. Aww. <laughs> what a, he is a gentleman, man. Forsen's uh, nothing but class, as you can tell. Um, so, uh, 
I mean, you got through the groups. Uh, that was a pretty tough group. I think people were picking 6-0 and Firebat to be the one's favorite, but, I mean, Forsen was the one who kind of did the dirty work killing Firebat for you. Uh, but uh, it was okay. Forsen helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Team effort, that's right. Mm -hmm. Today, Gachi wins. Yes. Mm. Mm. All right. Is there any players that you're scared of going into tomorrow? That guy. Uh. Oh, you called me a guy? Wow, that's the first time that she's labeled me the member of uh, the opposite sorry, gender. Sorry, I don't mean it too often. Uh, sorry. Uh. Triggered. Uh, I am triggered. In more ways than one. All right, so uh, I think... Um, I mean, do you want to say anything about that series on a serious note at all, or no? Um, like, do you actually want actually, to have uh, a discussion? I, you can just, just go I straight played, to the you, you know, the, 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 the playground, how to say it? The, the playroom is very hot, so I wasn't... I, I, don't, I didn't really know what I was doing when I actually... Uh, I was like, ah, what? Is this finished already? Uh, did I have any other class to play? Mm? <laughs> Something like that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Other players were complaining about being cold early in the day. Oh. What's what's really going on in there? Well, you you know, in know. communist China, we have air conditioning. Mm. Uh, Good to know. Yeah. Free uh, democratic Germany okay. should try this. Is that what you're saying? Uh, <laughs> Same. Same. Here, step number one to comedy, Eloise, is know your audience. We happen to be in Germany. So you might uh, not want to uh, make fun of their uh, their way of life, right? In front uh, of their faces. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Mm, mm. Mm. Germany, a very, very good country. There you mm. go. It's awesome. <laughs> Deutschland. All right, well, that ends uh, this segment of Awkward Interviews with Frodan, Chucky, and TJ. Thank you so much for guest starring, Eloise. Let's talk about day number three. We have, I believe, the round 16 groups. Let's check out... Uh, what we can expect tomorrow to see after all the play games have been done. Four oh, you, you guys are in the same group. Ah, really? what? Yeah. What first? Group B. Wow. Who is H2? <laughs> oh, uh, the winner I of... Know, I, oh, okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's a new player. You didn't see him? H2. I met him right now. He's taking down the tournament. Yeah. Like the like the life coach R RDU Tice leveled up from G2, just like freaking powered up to H2. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at these groups, and I don't know. I, th I think Dan's going to make it. Oh, Dan, oh, I know that actually, you are Actually, this is the kind of group that I want. Yeah. yeah you are <laughs> going to team, team effort me tomorrow. Yes, I know it. Thank We're you playing. very this much. Is, this is rigged. I don't want to be in, I wouldn't want to be in group A. Group A That's for sure. looks really tough. I mean, yeah. And also, I, I actually didn't uh, I actually didn't mention this. Hot Form is uh, also an NA player. I was saying all the NA players basically died, but yeah, uh, Mizale and Hot Form. That's it. And sure. maybe H2. And maybe H2. Shout out to uh, Ignite who did make it out second place in his group. I believe he uh, first place. Oh, first, first place, place in his group, yep. sorry. Um, that was a really nice run there. And, of course, Hot Form got first place in his group, too, on second stream. I think Hoy is also the first seed, defeating Lothar was, yep. uh, to get to. And, and, and H2 is playing right now, right? It's purple versus... Purple versus someone. Saiyan. Saiyan. Yep. Okay. Or, oh, yeah, or, yeah. or AK Wonder. Actually, they're really far behind. AK Wonder is playing Saiyan. The winner of that plays yeah. okay. Le Purple. So one of those three. Cool. What but, do you think about your group, Eloise? Oh, we have two beautiful girls. Mm. Girls is going to win this uh, uh, cup, right, Froda? Yeah. Mm. yeah, representation. Mm -hmm. It's not fair, man. I can't say anything back. All right, well, uh, I mean, that's going to be a fun day, so make sure to check out tomorrow. This is done on the mainstream. Make sure to check out the other stream as well. I think it's uh, twitch.tv slash takeTVblack. You can watch the conclusion of Group H. Uh, and that'll be uh, going on for the next hour or so. But from us here at the Casting Couch in Crefo, Germany, we're done. See you guys in day number three, 2 p.m. Central European time for more Sea Story Cup 5 action. Have a good night.